The start of the year is a time for new resolutions, a time for new beginnings, and a time to spring clean our financial affairs. For many, our finances always find itself at the bottom of our to-do list and never quite manages to make it to the top. So as we enter the spring and we're well on our way into the first quarter of the year, let's talk about the spring cleaning of our finances. Welcome to another episode of Money Matters. It's important to set goals and it's still okay to fail at achieving them. By setting goals, it gives us the impetus to make an effort to try to achieve them. After all, making some effort is infinitely better than none. The main difference between those who fail and those who succeed is the question of why. Why is this goal important to us? Let's use a fitness goal as an example. Oh, I want to lose some weight. Why? Oh, I want to get back in shape again. Why? Oh, I want to feel more confident in public and less self-conscious at the pool. Okay, so now we're getting to the core of the reason. So that's the positive motivation. But as many of us know, negative motivation is arguably more effective than positive motivation. The stick is more effective than the carrot. So then the question now becomes, what if? What if we don't get back in shape? What if we don't lose weight? What if we don't feel confident in public? What are the consequences? It's important to identify the emotions that drive us to achieve our goals. We can apply this to our finances too. Set your goals, ask why, and ask what if. Don't get stuck in a rut of eat, sleep, work, repeat. What is it all for? Ask yourself, what makes you happy? Whilst money doesn't buy happiness, it does buy options. And it is access to these options that leads to happiness. For most, financial freedom is the ultimate goal. Being free from having to wake up on Monday mornings for a conference call. Being free from working overtime that runs till midnight. Being free from missing birthdays and school plays. Remember, we work to live, not live to work. So we should ask ourselves this, is our money working as hard as we are? Where do we start? We start by assessing our assets and liabilities. Then we break down our monthly income and expenses. For many, we really need to trim the fat from our expenses, be brutally honest and cut back on those unwanted costs. Are we even saving any money? For those who are not natural savers and for young savers who are just starting on their journey, we must think of saving as a form of taxing ourselves each and every month, i.e. it's not even a choice. We must put away an amount each and every month and build up an emergency cash fund for emergencies. Once there's enough cash, typically six to 12 months of living expenses, then the fund begins. We can begin to invest our money and generate some serious returns. Young savers in particular have a huge advantage benefiting from compounding growth. Quantify your goal. Therefore, if financial freedom is your goal, sometimes known as retirement, Work out how much you need in order to achieve your desired retirement lifestyle. There is your target. Break down how much you need to save given the amount of time you've given yourself to achieve your target. If it's unrealistic, you may need to extend the time horizon of your given goal. Also take into account the effects of inflation. For those with existing investment policies and have forgotten about them for many years, dig up those policies. Look at how they're performing versus the global markets. If they're underperforming, question why. Switch the underlying assets, switch plans, or get help. Look at the charges. It may be an outdated, expensive plan that is no longer relevant in the modern era. Make sure you're getting a fair deal. 
For many, it's a time of pay rises and bonuses. Make sure you put this money to good use and invest it, unless you've already allocated it before receiving it. Don't let it go to waste. If you are a parent, work out if you have enough insurances to protect your family. Do not entirely rely on work cover, as you cannot typically take this with you when you leave. Also bear in mind that if you do decide to take out cover at a later age, you may not be fully covered due to a pre-existing condition. The younger you are when you take out the cover, the easier and cheaper it will be. For those typically in the more senior years, a will should be drawn up to express your wishes in leaving your estate to your beneficiaries. It goes without saying there is no fixed date of death. Even a basic will at an early age will ensure that your wishes are followed to protect your loved ones. For those sitting on hoards of cash, that cash is losing value in real terms. Inflation is the silent deadly killer of wealth, so get it invested, with returns at least matching inflation rates, which average around 3% per annum. Don't let apathy and laziness be the reason for you failing to achieve your life goals. Whatever your situation, whatever your goals, figuratively speaking, don't just stare at your feet. Keep your head up and look ahead when moving forwards. Your future depends on your planning. Luck favours the prepared and rewards go to those who take action. I wish you many great returns for the years ahead. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Let me know what other topics you would like to see in future videos. If you've liked this video, smash the like button, subscribe. And I'll see you on the next episode of Money Matters.